right, you can keep those hands going with us. Welcome to worship. Tear it through the dead of night. See the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light. Freedom shaking up the atmosphere. As the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears. Beyond the sky. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God, oh we look to the sun, set our eyes on a Savior, see the image of love.
seats, why don't you turn to someone and make them feel like family? Welcome to the chapel. My name's Carly. Thanks for spending a part of your weekend with us. At the chapel, we help you do four things. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We believe that freedom is found in community through connect groups. This semester, there are over 100 groups to choose from. We have groups that eat out, play sports, study the Bible, and do what you already do. That's why we say connect group to your life. Text the keyword ATTEND to 97000 and a link to view all of the groups will be sent right back to you. Our spring semester groups begin the week of February 2nd. Download the Chapel app today to instantly access our weekly worship guide, Bible reading plans, online giving, connect card, live services, events, and more with a simple scroll. You can also take notes on this weekend's message directly on your smartphone by clicking Worship Guide on the app's homepage. Well, enjoy the service. I'll see you soon. Hey, everybody. We're so glad to have you here with us at the chapel. My name is Josiah, and I'm one of the worship leaders on staff here at our church. And as we prepare to give, I want us to imagine something. Imagine a really nice car, maybe your favorite car, right? So think about that car. Some of us, it's a Ford F-150, Texas edition. And for others of us, it's a Model X Tesla. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right? See, that really nice car is valuable to us, so we treat it differently and we take care of it. We treat it differently and we take care of it. But some of us may never be able to afford a car like that. And so imagine somebody loans you that car. They let you borrow that car. You drive it a little bit safer than you would maybe your own car. You take care of it. You be more careful on the road. See, that principle is the principle of stewardship. And that's the way that God is with the resources that he's given us. All of our time, our talent, our treasure, all of our belongings are actually his belongings. And what he asks with what he's given us is that we use it wisely and that we give of it generously for purposes that glorify him. There's a scripture in Deuteronomy that says, each man should give as he is able according to the blessing the Lord your God has given you. Every gift that I have was given to me by God. And I remember that as we give. That's something we should remember this morning as we give, that God gave first. Amen? Come on, let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the blessing that it is just to be in relationship with you. We thank you for the incredible gift of your son Jesus, the sacrifice that he paid on the cross, the way that he rose again. God, you have given so much. And so we, as we give of our lives, as we give of our time, our talent, God, anything we give of, I pray that it would lift you up and it would magnify you. God, we're here today because of you. And we want you to be seen. We want you to be known. We love you so much, Jesus. And we pray all these things in his name. Amen. Amen. There are giving boxes at the end, or giving buckets at the end of the aisle. If you pass them along, there will be an usher there to receive them. And then let's stand together. We're going to lift our voices and sing of the love that God has shown to us with all that we have. Love so great, Jesus in all things. I've seen a glimpse of your heart, a billion years. Still I'll be singing How can I praise you enough? How can I praise you enough? You are the Lord of my I'm shining all the stars Lord Your love is like a wild Thank you. 
salvation calls all to the Savior. We are alive with the praise, earth and sky. No one is higher. Our God of one is to reign. Will you sing not to us but to your name?
Chapel Countryside this morning. Come on. So good. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Pastor Kyle. I'm honored to be one of your pastors here at the chapel. I'm also as equally honored that Pastor Q would trust me with the ball in my hands this weekend. As we close our series, Drain, learning how to not live life on empty. I don't know about you, but this series has been a game changer for me to start 2020. Anybody else in this room agree? Come on. So good. If you've missed any of these uh, messages during the series, Pastor Q has taken three weeks and all of them have been grand slams. Download the chapel app, catch up on where we're at, but today we're going to land this plane in the series Drained. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit and starting with the scripture that we've been using from Matthew chapter 11. This is Jesus speaking here. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And all the parents said, Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your what? Souls. Jesus takes time to outline for us that if we're going to find not just the rest for our minds or our bodies or our emotions, but if we are going to find rest on the deepest levels of who we are, our souls, it's important that we take the next right step towards him. He lays out for us a couple of principles here, and it's simply this. When we let him set the direction and when we let him set the pace, then we find rest for our souls. When we let him set the direction, when we let him set the pace, then we find rest for our souls. But oftentimes there are things that will want to, uh, how can I say this, attack us in the state of rest that God is leading us to. And one of those things in particular that we're going to drill down on today is a word called discontentment. Just being discontent. It's one of the things that causes us from being full to going to empty in a heartbeat. And if we don't allow ourselves to reset on a daily basis at a spot where we are full and content, we'll find ourselves living in a space of just being empty because we are discontent. Scripture points to us in Proverbs chapter 14. It says, it's healthy to be content, but envy can eat you up. It's healthy to be content. You ever met somebody that's envious? Don't look at them. Don't, don't text them. <laughs> uh, the, the old phrase, you know, they're just green with envy. It's just, uh, they're just, they're just envious all the time. They just, they're just envious. You can't talk to them because that envy just creeps out of their ears. And, and, and I just want to encourage you, being envy, uh, envious or, or having the emotion of envy or this thing that guides you, uh, this, this actually comes from a heart that is just discontent. Scripture here, the wisest man that have ever lived, uh, go back with me, Proverbs, just one second. The wisest man that ever, have ever lived says it's healthy to be what? Content. Here at the chapel, we talk all the time. Uh, we just don't want to live good lives. We want to live wise lives. We want to live healthy lives. And it's just healthy. It's just, ah, you just feel better when you live what? Content. You just are better when you live what? Content. Not trying to keep up with the rat race of life. It's healthy, Scripture says, to live what? Content. 
The Apostle Paul, in in the book of Philippians chapter 4, he makes this statement. He says, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. You ought to highlight that in your Bible or highlight that in your neighbor's phone. In any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. Whether living in plenty or in want, watch this, this is the one we all know. I can do all things through him, Christ, who gives me strength. Now, we've shouted, we've danced, we've gotten tattoos about Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. But if we're going to arrive at Philippians 4, 13, it's important for us to establish what is taking place in verses 11 and 12. And Paul lays out for us that he has come to a place where he has learned what it is to being content. Uh, Let me just go on record as saying this. None of us were born with contentment as a trait. All of us were born discontent. All, uh, here's how I know. Raise, raising kids now, uh, after dada and mama, the next phrase Savannah learned really fast was, more peace, more peace. <laughs> little discontent little kid, come on. That's how I knew she wasn't saved, just so you know, just so you know. Just, 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 just not content. And how many know it's cute at two but it ain't cute at 32. <laughs> and, and Paul stops here and says, I've, I've learned the secret to being content in life. Being content, it's a learned characteristic. It's something that's developed over time. And watch this, I'm going to cuss this morning. It's developed over process. I'm going to talk to this side. Here we go. It's developed as we go through things. Well, well, how is it developed, Paul? He lays out for us right here. He says, uh, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret to being content, watch this, in any and every situation. I've had it. I've lost it. I've had to eat ramen noodles every night, and then I've had the bone-in ribeye with mashed potatoes. And asparagus <laughs> and Kool Aid. <laughs> what flavor? Red. <laughs> then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. <laughs> How great thou art. Paul says, Paul says, I, I, I know, I, I know, I know the secret to being content. It's, it's having to navigate through, through any and every situation. I, there's just a couple things I want to share with you this morning uh, about, about contentment. The, the, the first thing I want to share uh, with you about contentment is this, uh, is that contentment is not found in what we have. Mm-hmm. Contentment is not found in what we can put our hands on or what we can accumulate. It's not found in an individual. It's not found in a relationship. It's not found in money. If we're looking for it in money, I just want to go on record as quoting the philosopher Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. the notorious B.I.G., Mo Money, <laughs> Mo Problems. It's, 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 not, it's not found in what we have. And watch this. Uh, contentment isn't found in what happens to us either. You ever get annoyed when you see somebody post something really good happened in their life? Hashtag blessed. And then two posts later, something crazy happened in their life and go, I don't know if God left me. <laughs> like, just chill. Contentment's not based upon what you have. And contentment is not based upon what happens to you. Contentment is based upon who you are anchored to internally. Because it's not about what's happening to you or around you. It's about what's going on inside of you. Greater is he who lives in me than he that lives in the world. There's something deeper going on on the inside of us. And this is where the contentment is rooted. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean where on Jesus' name. It's Christ the solid rock where our contentment stands because all other ground has been proven to be sinking sand. It's, 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 it's internal. And Paul says that it's developed through any 
and every situation. Anybody been through a little any and every in your life? There's some things that have happened to you and you just could have never dreamed this terrible nightmare. You, you had no idea that these things would show up. You fill in the blank of what these things are. But Paul says that it's the any and every situation that God uses to draw us to a place of being content in him and through him. Because it's in these every situations that we walk through that we find out who God is and who we are not. Okay, now I'm going to go talk to them. Here we go. It's, it's the moments that we're in the any and every situation that we end up getting a pride check. You know what that is, right? When God checks you so hard that your pride gets shook, we all need it from time to time. Because it reminds us who is in control and who is not. It reminds us who has supreme strength and who does not. It reminds us who has patience and who's about to lose their mind. Up in here. <laughs> up in here. Paul, Paul, Paul lays out, he says, it's the any and every situation that God uses to cultivate and to develop this contentment on the inside of us. Because all of us have an idea in our minds about how things would go and how things should go where we are right here and right now. A little diagram we got for you here, a little diagram I want to show you, a little diagram I want to throw up on the screen. Here we go. Uh, uh, it's it's the, the here, by the way, you got to love the stick figures, just so we're clear. These are timeless. Uh, here, my, my family, my house, my friends, my job, all, all of us have a here that we're living in. Some of us are are young married couples and we're, we're having kids or we're trying to have kids and some of us have been married for a little while and you're just trying to get them kids out of your house. <laughs> some of y'all single and been ready to mingle. <laughs> I get it. I, God bless you. you, you, you so some of us are at spots where, where you, you don't even necessarily want to watch your own grandkids because you're so over kids. You know what I'm saying? You... You, you, so some of us are at spots where, where we have educational endeavors that we're seeking or we, we want to see the growth potential for our income in the places which we work. Some, some of us have taken us eight years just to get the associates and we're wondering how long it's going to take us to get the bachelors, let alone the masters or, or the doctorates. So, some of us are just in spaces where we don't know whether we're going or whether we're coming. All, all of us have a here and a now. And oftentimes what happens in our lives is that we, we, we underestimate what's happening here because we're so focused on trying to get there where you or I would like to be. Oh, it's going to get real in here. Y'all ready? Uh, uh, we, we underestimate what God is doing here because we're so consumed with trying to get there. But the thing that we forget oftentimes is that who you become here will determine what you become there. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh-huh. So, ma'am, if all you're going to do is nag him here, ain't nothing going to change when you get there. Uh, sir, if you don't have time to take her out on a date here, there won't be no time there. Let's not forget that if we're not worshipers here, we're not going to be worshipers there. If we're not praisers here, we're not going to be praisers. That, oh, y'all sitting on me tonight. Here we go. Uh, if, you, if you're not prayer warriors here, you're not going to pray at all when you get over there. It's important that we allow God in here to shape and to mold and to guide and to develop and to get things off of us that we don't need and to get people away from us that aren't going to add to our lives but take away. Let's not be so focused on there that we forget what he is doing here. But it hurts, Kyle. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Trust in the Lord with what all of your heart. Lean not to which you thought was best, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and let him be the one that directs when you get from here to what? There. Come on. Yep, 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 
Yep. Some of you, your here has lasted longer than you planned. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to talk about it because it's painful. But can I, just, can I just break it down this morning like I would if I was in St. Pete? Um, the reason why you're still here is because you're not ready for there. Had you gotten there already, you would have killed yourself. Because there's some things that God is doing here, and it's his grace and his mercy that hasn't let you get there yet. Because just as much as you think your shoulders are broad and you can handle everything that's there, there's still something that's got to be learned over here. There's still some integrity that's got to be developed right here. There's still some character that's got to be developed right here. There's, there's a, track, a track mark of, of faithfulness that's got to be developed right here. And if it doesn't get developed here, you're going to get there and lose it all. And so it's God's strength and his mercy and his grace that's kept you here. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It's not... It's not your spouse that's kept you here. It's not the kids. It's not that boss that you want to reach across the desk and lay hands on them. <laughs> that's not why you're here. You're here because what is for you is for you. In God's timing and in God's way. But if I'm going to get there, I cannot underestimate what God is doing here. Because watch this, when I go from here to there, what he did in me and for me, he now wants to do what? Through me. And how many know God ain't trying to have no junk come through you? I know it's terrible English, but it's good preaching. <laughs> here, 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 here. Here is where the, the contentment is developed. Here, here is where, 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 where God begins to help us to transition our thought process away from, sometimes we think that contentment is complacency. And just so we're clear, uh, the word complacency, it's like a cuss word to me. Probably some of you too. Especially those of us who are, who are ambitious uh, and driven and competitive. Like I'm so competitive that I actually uh, hate losing more than I enjoy winning. I know, not healthy. That's why I go to counseling. It's okay. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't confuse contentment with complacency. God, God wants you to have hashtag life goals. God wants you to have hashtag relationship goals. God, God wants you to live a life that's not on E, but that's full. Not being drained, but experiencing the fullness that he has for you in every aspect of your life. Mind, body, soul, spirit. He wants this for you, but it requires us to take a step back and realize that contentment is not complacency. Complacency, you just settled. You, you, you just settled. What are you doing? Ah, I'm just settling. No, God, God wants you to pursue, in many cases, the things that we have in our hearts to pursue are things that God put there. Their ideas and their dreams, their goals. And you and I just aren't smart enough to come up with them on our own. Y'all quiet. The creator of all gives birth to these things and tries to let them happen through our lives. And watch this. Don't succumb to the lie that contentment is complacency. Contentment is simply this. Wherever I am, I'm good. Wherever I am, I'm good. Paul says if I had plenty, I'd be good. If I had nothing, I'm still good. If I have hair, I'm good. If I don't have hair, I'm good. More on that in a minute. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, it says, We do not dare classify or compare ourselves. It is not wise. Because one of the killers of contentment is comparison. The greatest, one of the greatest killers of contentment is comparison. 
I heard Lecrae say it like this. I'm winning it being you, but I'm losing it being me. And I'm so good at being you that I have absolutely no idea who I am. I don't, I, don't, I don't know who I am. Watch this. Oftentimes it's because we haven't taken time to let the creator remind us whose we are. Because who you belong to dictates what should come through your life. Like we have this statement that, that we say with our daughter. And we'll say it with Kyrie when he gets here. And, 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 and it's this. It's, hey, you're a Rogers. And others may, but you cannot. And it's, it's not trying to elevate us and say that we're better than anybody else. Absolutely not. We're human just like everybody else. But there is a standard that we will live from in this house. As for me and my house, we'll what? Serve the Lord. You, you feel me? And so when we get clear about whose we are and about the standard that God has through his word, we'll, we'll stop trying to keep up with everybody else. We'll, we'll stop trying to compare what we have and what we don't have to what they have. Uh, ma'am, you were not created to be Lisa, Leslie, or Laquanda. You were created to be you, fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of your creator. God likes you just the way you are. God is going to give you everything you need to be the mother he's called you to be, the wife he's called you to be, the co-worker he's called you to be, the person on the PTSA board that that he's called you to be. God will help you in every single way. My brother, God has not called up, called us to keep up with the Joneses. And just so we're clear, I don't even know who the Joneses are. <laughs> but we're sitting around here comparing, and well, look at what they're driving. I probably should be driving that too. Look at where they're living. Baby, why are we not living there? Can I just tell you what the Bible says in the Greek about this? Stop! <laughs> Let me say it because I'm from the hip-hop generation. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> You're trying to keep up with everybody else but not keeping up with what God says about you. Jeremiah 29, 11 still speaks truth. I know, God, I'm not guessing. I'm not dreaming. I'm not thinking. I'm not trying to figure this thing out. I know the plans I have concerning you. They are plans for good and not evil. I will give you hope and an incredible future if you'll just cry out to me and lean in to my plan because his plan existed before their opinion. His purpose existed before their pessimism and he will be the one that sticks with you no matter what. Yeah. Comparison. Comparison has actually killed more contentment than the enemy ever could. We give the devil too much credit sometimes. God, get the enemy away from me. It ain't the enemy, it's you. Paul says, hey, uh, classifying and comparing, it's just not wise. Social media, I, I enjoy it. That's why I put one of them screen time alerts on there. I don't overuse it. But sometimes social media has a way of magnifying how good someone else's life seemingly looks. At the Eiffel Tower, making out. <laughs> I mean, no, just because you at the Eiffel Tower kissing, that don't mean you in love. Are y'all getting holy on me? Okay, 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 okay. You know, one family, they got all their kids looking at the camera at the same time, smiling. <laughs> That don't mean they're good parents. That means they got lucky. <laughs> I'm not saying that that couple's not in love. I'm not saying that they're bad parents. What I am saying is oftentimes we take these snapshots and we compare them to our backstory because we know all the gory details going in our lives. We know the argument that we just had with our spouse right before we went to the beach and found good natural lighting and You know how many times it took you trying to get your kid's attention. And you probably yelled three or four times. 
Well, that doesn't make you a bad parent. Just because you saw a 60-second clip on Instagram of some child singing Moana, really cute. Like, that's great. But we can't compare people's snapshots to our backstory. Because they got a story too. And the longer we spend comparing, look what they have. Look what we don't have. You miss, you miss key moments. There's a value that we have in our home, and it's this. Just embrace the moment. These are the good old days. Enjoy the good old days. I literally, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'm a little weird, but Savannah's almost four years old, and I realize in my mind, I literally only have, I don't know, about 16 more years, 14 more years before she's not in the house every day when she wakes up. She'll spend more time as an adult than she will as a child in my home. Let me not be in such a hurry to get her. Now, sometimes you just, I mean, not literally. Come on, come on, come on. Like, just, just take time. Like, just take time. If you're married, just, like, take time with your spouse. In the rat race that is life, how good is it for us to gain the whole world but yet lose the things that are most important to us? Like, just stop. Grab your spouse's hand. Look in their eyes and remind yourself why you fell in love. Instead of comparing, look what they're doing. Look, what, look, 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 look. Look, hey, hey, if you was more like this, I'd probably be more like that. <laughs> Married people look like they got it good. I'm still single, boo. We're sitting right here comparing. Instead of just taking a step back and saying, God, I'm where you want me to be. At the moment you wanted me to be there, with what you desired me to have. And the secret to this contentment is learning how to just be joyful and experience the fulfillment that is you and your presence in any and every situation. There's effects to this, to this comparison thing. Here's are some of the effects. Watch this. When we compare our abilities to others, we develop a sense of jealousy. When we compare our appearance to others, we develop this sense of insecurity. Um, sweetheart, that's why you're stalking all of his Instagram followers. Okay, here we go. The comparison trap you fall into with possessions is you become envious. Well, look, look at the car they got. I guess I better go out and get me one of those too or something better, right? Did you forget now they have 72 months of debt? Don't worry, we got a connect group for that. Here we go. <laughs> the effects of comparison achievement, it just develops a level of anxiety. Why, 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 why did I get the promotion? Why, why don't they talk to me anymore? They used to take me out to lunch all the time. Now they don't take me out to lunch anymore. I wonder if they even like me anymore. I guess I better go find another job. So let me get my resume all together, put it on Indeed.com, and then get a job. But what if I get to the new job, and I don't like the new job six months later, so I need to go get a new job, and I get a new job after that. And before you know, I've lost some of my 401K benefits, and I don't know where I'm going, and all of a sudden, I... What? The comparison trap and troubles. Don't, let's just all go on record this morning as saying we can't stand it when we are in a room and someone who looks like they have it all together walks by. Okay. I mean, you just get, you just get tight. You get resentful. And they walk by and you go, mm, can't stand them. Don't even know you, but I hate you. <laughs> and we fall into all of these traps. None of these traps is what God set out for us to fall into. If we're going to fall into anything, let's fall in love with the one who will never stop loving us. Let's, let's fall in love with the standard that he calls us to live by and the standard that he lays out for us in his word. If we're going to evaluate ourselves by anything, let's evaluate ourselves by God's standard and his alone. 
We're getting ready to launch connect groups here at the chapel next weekend. So exciting. If you've never been into a connect group before, get into one. Oh, I don't really like people like that. Try. <laughs> Why? Because oftentimes when you get in community with other believers who are growing and being developed and shaped and molded and guided by God's word and not merely by culture, you'll find that they will encourage you in life-giving ways to help you see yourself from the perspective that God sees yourself. Hello. And it's in these moments that we can start getting out of some of those group texts we've been in. Here's how you know that a group of friends is probably not good. If when you get into a group text with friends and you start complaining, they just keep complaining or they just throw gas on that fire. How about you get around a group of folks that they'll give you about five minutes to complain and then they go, okay, so what are we going to do about this? What God say about this? What's God saying about your insecurity? What's God saying about your anxiety? What's God saying about your trust issues? This is where connect groups come in. Is that it's each one helping one another to experience the best that God has for their lives. Amen? Amen. There's a, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, another thing that you can do to, to combat con, uh, complacency and combat comparison is just simply stop the FOMO. We know what FOMO is, right? It, fear of missing out. I like to say it like this. We got to fight the FOMO. Because to say stop the FOMO, for me, I've had FOMO since I was a kid. Like, I, I never wanted to go to bed at night because I was afraid I was going to miss something. Now I'm grown, and I realize what I was missing. Dessert and quiet time. <laughs> and this, this FOMO, it, it just it shakes us to our core from time to time. If I can just talk from a parent's perspective really quickly, uh, Savannah, in her first semester of school, they were coming to the end of the year. And, and y'all know, at the end of the year, they have these end-of-the-year programs that they do uh, where all the kids come out and they dress up like ants or they got little leaves in their hands. And, you know, it's just all, and you're just hoping your kid's not the one that, you know, pees themselves in front of everybody, you know. So, so, so Danielle was traveling for work because she's got an incredible job that she's passionate about. I love it. She has that outlet. So she's traveling for work. And so I'm a single parent that week, and I am holding it down, just so we are clear. I am killing the game right now. But I can't figure out how to maneuver out of a few different things so I can be at Savannah School for this end-of-the-year program. And just so we're clear, her little part in the program, it wasn't even a speaking part. It was just like run out, wave, and run back. And it was about 120 seconds long, right? For 48 hours, I am torn up inside because I am afraid that I'm going to miss out on some special moments. It's 120 seconds. I know. FOMO. I'm sweating. I'm texting Danielle. And you ever know how sometimes you just get extra spiritual in moments like that? Like, God, I got this heavy burden. <laughs> Please get it off of me. <laughs> God's just like, no, bro, just chill. <laughs> So we have some friends that go to the school, and, and, and their, their child's in the same class with Savannah. And so they take video, and they text it to me and Danielle. It, the, the part she had wasn't 120 seconds. It was 37 seconds long. Why? Because, like, trying to corral a bunch of two-year-olds is like trying to herd cats in traffic. Good luck. <laughs> Afterwards, Savannah goes, Daddy, did you see me on stage? I'm like, absolutely. I didn't lie. I saw the video. Come on. But the next day, I'm in my time with God, and I felt like he just, this is how God talks to me. I like talking to you, he talks to me. He said, hey, what up, man? You good? I'm like, sheesh. I'm not even a drama queen, but I got dramatic. <laughs> That's the scripture he took me to in Philippians chapter 4. This is what Paul says. Do not be anxious about what? Anything. Do not be anxious about your daughter's end of the year play. Do not be anxious about your finances. Do not be anxious about your marriage. Do not be anxious about whether or not you'll ever get married. Do not be anxious about where you're going to college. Do not be anxious about what major you're going to have when you get there. Do not be anxious about how much student loan debt you could accumulate. <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything. Well, God, that's easy for you to say because you God. And he says, I, I get it. 
But now I'm going to lay out for you the process to not becoming anxious. But in what? Every situation. There it is again. In every situation. By what? Prayer and petition. With what? Thanksgiving. Present your request to God. God gives us a three-step process. Talk. Ask. Thanks. Talk. Ask. Thanks. Talk. That's simply what prayer is. A conversation between you and God. Just talk. It's hard because I can't see him. Yep. But scripture still says that more blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. Just talk. I'm afraid of what I'm going to say. Trust me, God's ears are going to be okay. I don't know if it's going to come out right. It never does. How do you pray, Pastor? Really ugly most times. Just talk. And then ask. Ask what? Not just ask for what you want. Or watch this, or what you think you want. Ask for his perspective and what he thinks is best. There's a, a habit I was taught in my relationship with God, my daily time with God, to come into my time with God with seemingly two lists. A list of the things that I have on my heart and on my mind. And how many know, when you go to prayer, you got about 47 different things you can put in that list. But then the other part is having a list of things that you're thankful for. Every day I'll go to write, and the very first question, there's eight of them that I answer each day. The very first question is, what are you thankful for? Now, we can be very general and vague and say, man, I'm thankful for breath in my lungs and to be in my right mind, and those things are not to be taken lightly. But how I many know those are, just, those are very general things sometimes? Get really specific with what you're thankful for. I'm thankful. I'll just give you a few of mine. I can just reach my hand over and put my hand on Danielle's stomach, and I can feel Kyrie moving around in there. I'm thankful that I can take Savannah to school and we can rap Kanye West, that Chick-fil-A song, <laughs> all the way to school. I'm thankful that Kanye West dropped a gospel album in my lifetime. <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I can pick up the phone and I can call my mom so I can just talk to her. I'll tell you what reminded me to be thankful for that on a whole nother level is just two weeks ago, I did the funeral service for one of my good friends from high school. His mom died of cardiac arrest on New Year's Day. And we had to pause the service for about three minutes because of their public displays and just outburst of grief and just being distraught. She was just here 48 hours ago. And now... Maybe your mother annoys you. That's okay. Call her today. You annoy me, but I'm thankful for you. <laughs> just, just, old song said, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Here we go. Students, I'm going to challenge you. Write a thank you card to the teacher that annoys you the most. And tell them one thing that they've taught you. Like, well, they didn't teach me nothing. They're annoying me. Good, they're teaching you patience. <laughs> and trust me, you're going to work for some bad bosses. You're going to need it. Am I making sense? Because watch this. The wider the thankfulness, the deeper the contentment. It's so easy to point at what your spouse is not. It's a lot harder to point your spouse and say, I see your faults, but I choose to love the essence of who you are.
you are the most. Kyle, I'd rather smack my kids than hug them right now. I get it. Just so we're clear, I was one. <laughs> Just pull them close. Not in the headlock, but pull them close. Remind them of what it was like the day you gave birth to them. How when you finally saw their face, you weren't concerned about the labor pains anymore. Take time. Talk about what you're thankful for. All of us in this room are watching online. We have at least one thing in particular to be thankful for. And that is the forgiveness and the love of Jesus Christ. If ever I think I don't have anything to be thankful for, I'm thankful he didn't quit on me when he had every right to. Because he didn't, I won't either. The wider the thankfulness, the deeper the contentment. Avoid being empty. Choose to start your day with thankfulness. Because what starts your day, as Pastor Q says, sets your day. Let's get in that rhythm. And let's be life-giving to those that God's put around us. Amen? God, thank you so much for your presence and your power and your word. I pray that you would give us courage to walk it out. Help us not just be hearers of your word, but also doers of your word as well. Not by might, nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Hey, there are prayer team members on both sides of the worship center for any prayer need that you have. We love you. Get connected into a group. We'll see you next weekend.